Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in extending greetings and welcoming the distinguished leaders and the esteemed guest speakers of the inaugural session. Joining us uh, now, being led uh, by Dr. Vinod Paul, the Honorable Member Niti Ayog. We welcome uh, and thank our leaders. And uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Vinod Paul to please uh, formally inaugurate the Asia-Pacific Leaders Conclave, along with the other distinguished dignitaries, our Honorable uh, Chief Minister of uh, Tripura, the Honorable Health Minister of Mizoram, and uh, the Honorable Ministers of uh, Solomon Islands and Fiji, along with the other esteemed speakers, to please mark the auspicious inauguration of the Asia-Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination 2023. As for our Indian traditions and customs by lighting of uh, the ceremonial lamp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we seek the blessings of the Supreme Power, invoking the blessings of the Divine and lighting this uh, lamp of knowledge and wisdom. Each wick uh, which is being lit is being further passed uh, from one person to another. That represents the sharing of knowledge and wisdom. And we have our uh, distinguished leaders, Dr. Vinod Paul, the Honorable Chief Minister of uh, Mizoram, Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura, the Health Minister of Mizoram, the Honorable Ministers of uh, Fiji and Solomon Islands, Dr. Poonam Khetupal Singh, the Regional Director, WHO CRO Region, our respected Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Shri Rajesh Bhushanji. Dr. Tanu Jain and uh, Shri Manji, the Joint Secretary. We are aiming for greater collaborations and partnerships and all coming together, uniting. Uh, we seek the blessings of the Supreme Power, of the Divine Power, and the good wishes of everyone present here by lighting the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. Thank you to our uh, dignitaries. May I request him to kindly grace today's? Requesting uh, Dr. Vinod Paul, our Honorable Ministers, the Health Minister from Fiji and Solomon Islands, our Honorable Chief Minister Tripura, the Honorable Health Minister of uh, Mizoram, requesting uh, the Regional Director, WHO, Seattle Region, our uh, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and uh, the Joint Secretary, along with Dr. Tanu Jain, to all uh, to please grace the test. And requesting you all also, ladies and gentlemen, to kindly be seated. So ladies and gentlemen, namaskar to all uh, present here once again. Good greetings of the day and good greetings of the event. We just now had a very auspicious beginning by the lighting of the ceremonial lamp. And on behalf of the host ministry, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India, I extend greetings and welcome you all to the Asia Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination 2023 which is being organized in partnership with the Asia-Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance. 
And this uh, day-long discussions, ladies and gentlemen, which we are going to be having is uh, towards sharing and learning from each other. The work which we have been doing, the existing interventions, uh, sharing with each other, the best practices. And at the same time, uh, taking a review of the progress which we have been able to make towards malaria elimination, also discussing on the challenges which have been on the pathway. And then further, reaffirming the political commitments uh, and giving a new impetus to the multi-sectoral and intersectoral and global collaborations uh, to accelerate the progress towards ending malaria, and especially the commitment which the countries have made towards ending malaria by 2030. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we are having this conclave on a very opportune day. World over tomorrow, we are going to be observing the World Malaria Day. And uh, as you might be aware, for the year 2023, the theme is time to deliver zero malaria, invest, innovate, and implement. That gives us uh, further more uh, opportunity to unite and to come together and end malaria. So thanking uh, each of our uh, distinguished dignitaries for taking our time and uh, joining us today and further guiding us. And at the very onset, I would like to request uh, our Joint Secretary, Shri Rajiv Manjiji, the Joint Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, for his welcome remarks. Thank you. A very good morning from India. Namaste and Bula. Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Chemical and Fertilizers, Republic of India, Dr. Dr. Mansukh Mandavya, sir, who has been busy with some uh, work, but he has expressed his blessings. We welcome his Gesture, Honorable Chief Minister, State of Tripura, Republic of India, Professor Dr. Manik Sahasar, Honorable Member, Niti Ayog, Dr. V.K. Paul, sir, Honorable Minister, State of Mizoram, Republic of India, Dr. Al R. Lalthangliana, sir, Honorable Minister of Health and Medical Services, Republic of Fiji, His Excellency, Dr. Antonio Lalabalabu, Honorable Minister of Health and Medical Services, Solomon Island, His Excellency Kalvik Togamana, sir, Respected Secretary to Government of India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Sri Rajesh Bhushan, sir, Respected Regional Director, World Health Organization, CRO, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, madam, Director, NCVBDC, CEO, Asia Pacific Leaders, Malaria Alliance, Dr. Sarthak Dasji. It is my proud privilege to welcome you all to this event. Sir, the dignitaries, distinguished guests, donor agencies, partner institution, NGOs, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to welcome you all to this Asia Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination, hosted by the Government of India in partnership with Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance. India has made a remarkable progress towards malaria elimination in recent years, leading to reduction in malaria burden by almost 90% over the last decades. Efforts of India towards elimination of malaria have been commended at the global level. Among the 11 countries that are part of the WHO's high burden, high impact initiatives, only India reported a decline in malaria cases during the height of COVID-19 pandemic. The country has marshaled out its efforts towards prevention, vector control, through LLIN and IRS, testing and diagnosis, treatment and tracking of malaria cases, particularly in the remote and epidemiologically challenging area. Our commitment to end malaria 
remains steadfast. On the eve of World Malaria Day, this event is being hosted with the expectation to share the experiences and reaffirm our commitment to eliminate malaria by 2030. We are aware that Asia-Pacific region is incredibly diverse. Despite that, the progress over the last two decades has been significant. This event will provide a unique opportunity for all of us to discuss and learn from one another experiences as well as best practices. I urge upon all the dignitaries and delegates to actively participate in the discussion, share their insights and knowledge to help shape the agenda for malaria elimination. Once again, I welcome you all to this Asia-Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination 2023 to this beautiful city of Delhi. Thank you, Jahin. Thank you very much, sir, for setting further the tone and the context uh, of the conclave. And ladies and gentlemen, India has always believed in Vasudeva Kutumkam, that it is. And in fact, that also stands as uh, the message and uh, the theme of our G20 presidency. It's one earth, one family, and one future for all of us. And that is where India, under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi, stands committed uh, to uh, be working towards global good and welfare for all, working with everyone, collaborating and building partnerships. So we would like to once again express our deep gratitude and appreciation to all our distinguished speakers of the inaugural session, the leaders joining us today in this uh, fight against malaria. From uh, India side, I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Tanu Jain, and may I also request Ms. Amita Chebi from APRAMA to please join in extending uh, these gifts, our uh, gratitude, our appreciation to all our distinguished uh, speakers. Thanking once again uh, Dr. Vinod Paul, the Honorable Member Niti Ayog. Thanking Dr. Manik Saha, the Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura. Our appreciation. And thank you to Dr. Vinod Paul. Thank you for uh, presiding over the session. Thanking the Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare of Mizoram. Dr. R. Lal Tangliana. Thank you, sir. <laughs> to the Honorable Minister of Health and Medical Services, Republic of Fiji. Excellency Dr. Ratu Antonio Rabese Lala Balauvu. Gratitude to Excellency Dr. Kulwek uh, Togumana, the Honorable Minister of Health, the Solomon Islands. <laughs> to respected uh, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Shri Rajesh Bhushanji. Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, the Regional Director, WHO CRO Region. Thank you, ma'am. In fact, uh, the views, the perspective, the guidance which each one of them are going to be extending to us stands extremely valuable in taking this fight against malaria. Thanking Dr. Satak Das. The CEO of Asia-Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance, uh, thank you for partnering uh, with the Government of India. Thank you for the support.
and uh, to our Joint Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. <laughs> Shri Rajiv Manji, thank you for all the support which he has uh, sent to us and uh, further guiding us. And uh, further, ladies and gentlemen, from the Government of India side, we would like to extend further special welcome and uh, our gratitude to the Honorable Ministers of Fiji and Solomon Islands, and I would like to request uh, Sri Rajesh Bhushanji, our respected secretary, to kindly present these special token of our gratitude appreciation to them. The Honorable Minister of Fiji, thanking once again. These are special. Uh, Gifts from India side, from incredible India. Welcome to India. Hope you enjoy the hospitality and a further thanking from Solomon Islands, Dr. Togumana. Thank you, sir. And now may I request uh, Dr. Sathak Das, the CEO of the Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance, which is a regional malaria advocacy organization. And for the conclave, they have partnered with the government of India. I request him for his remarks. Thank you. A warm, or maybe cool if it's too hot today, welcome to your excellency. Honorable Sri Mansuk Mandavia Ji, who I understand is not here, but I wish to acknowledge. Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura, Professor Dr. Manik Saha. Honorable Minister for Health, Mizoram, Dr. Lal. Honorable Member, Dr. Vinod Paul, our Chair from Niti Aayog. Honorable Minister for Health from the Solomon Islands, Dr. Togamana. Honorable Dr. Lala Balavu, Minister of Health from the Republic of Fiji. I'd like to acknowledge the former First Lady of Papua New Guinea, the Honorable Lady Rosalind Murauta. I'd like to also acknowledge Dr. Punam Singh, Regional Director of Sierra, Dr. Rodrigo Afrin, the WHO Representative for India, Secretary Rajesh Bhushan, Joint Secretary Rajiv Manji, Honorable Dr. Mao Ta Neng, the Under Secretary of State, from Kingdom of Cambodia, ex-minister from Bhutan, Dr. Jigmi, Dr. Chanu Jain, director from the national program here. Of course, our colleague, Joint Secretary Rajiv Manji, Dr. Corinne Karema, the CEO of the Rollback Malaria Partnership, Dr. Philip Welkoff, the director from Malaria at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and many, many other distinguished partners and guests if I have made any omissions, I will make it up during the tea break. As many are aware, India's theme of the G20, Vasudeva Kutambakam, one world, one family, that is certainly reflected here today in looking at this room and those who are joining us virtually as we join together to end the menace of this ancient fever. Many may not be aware, but the planning for this event began almost four years ago in 2019 with the government of India. And so on behalf of APLAMA, I'd like to thank our heartfelt gratitude to the government of India for their persistence in making sure this happened. I'd also like to thank the regional and country leadership of the World Health Organization for continuing to be steadfast partners. And to all of you joining virtually, thank you for being there at all hours. And to those of you who are here physically, from the Pacific Northwest to the South Pacific, from Mizoram to the Mekong, for bringing not only your minds, but also your hearts to end this disease, which disproportionately affects our most vulnerable. I'm not going to drone on. There are three points I'd like to make. The first is that we must bring back a sense of urgency to what we are doing in Asia Pacific around malaria. By the time we wake up tomorrow on World Malaria Day, 30 people will have died. And there are probably 
well over the 12,000 reported annual deaths in Asia, in Asia Pacific, and that is in the count of countries from Afghanistan to Vanuatu that comprise our Secretariat's work. While it may be a small number in comparison to Sub-Saharan Africa, one an hour is not acceptable for a disease that's preventable, treatable, and that has been eliminated from 42 countries in the world, including within this region, in China and Sri Lanka, with so many countries on the cusp, and as we will hear today, even here in India, the remarkable progress that's happening. It is a medical, but also a moral imperative. When we think about 2030 as a goal, seven years in some ways feels long and short. And I think that this issue of making it short is an important one for this group to consider. How do we take seven years and translate that into something from a local perspective that's more tangible? Are there timelines around 18 months, 24 months, even 12 months to help a district manager who will be at the heart of this work enable and feel inspired to continue the fight? The second point is that we need to remind ourselves and others of what is possible. Yes, malaria is complex, and we can spend a lot of time talking about the complexity, but let's think about HIV, TB, or the battle against COVID. There are similar complexities in public health, and if we read public health history, let's just think about smallpox eradication for a moment. Now, one may argue that malaria elimination is too complex an endeavor to be compared to smallpox, but I'd like to offer up a few quick points of core themes that we can learn from. The tools, yes, in smallpox, a safe and effective vaccine, but in malaria, we have proven tools from vector control, diagnostics, and drugs, and we have a rapidly expanding toolbox in no small part because of the efforts of many people in this room. And those tools can be a booster rocket to expanding the arsenal of interventions that we can deploy. A second important point is global coordination. The smallpox effort was spearheaded by WHO. We have that leadership globally. I spoke with the new director of the Global Malaria Program. We have that leadership in the region through Dr. Poonam Singh and many others, and we have that leadership in the countries themselves. When we think about surveillance in the case of smallpox, there were strong surveillance and containment strategies. Our region has great examples. Just look at 137. When we think about smallpox and a focus on high-risk populations, as we get to the end of the campaign, and that's kind of where we are, the priority was given to high-risk populations in figuring out how to make things work. That's what we need to do. And this is where we will most likely lose steam, but we can't allow ourselves to do so. Because when we look at the epidemiology of malaria in our region, the concentration is among our most vulnerable. So we must be relentless in those places. Finally, of course, political commitment was central to smallpox. And we have that political commitment of heads of government from this region that seems to be enduring beyond changes at the head of state level. So I raise this example not to debate differences, but that we can remind ourselves in what can be a noisy global health landscape of what is possible in public health. The final point, and if we could put up a slide if it's possible, is back to the theme of the G20. One world, one family, that we have to think about building root bridges. We had a wonderful discussion yesterday evening with the Honorable Minister from the Solomon Islands and we talked about community. Ending this malaria fight will happen mostly where the pavement ends, where systems are weak, where our most vulnerable are, and we can use malaria to strengthen those systems. The image of a living root bridge can take a decade plus to build one of these with people who have expertise over time, but then they become more sturdy than cement and concrete they're also resilient to withstand the effects of climate and other dangers that may come. May our effort today and beyond to marshal the technical and financial resources required be also dedicated to help communities build that enduring strength and end the suffering from the oldest known pandemic once and for all. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Santak Das, for your uh, very constructive suggestions and recommendations. And as we work towards building these uh, strong and resilient uh, pathways to prevent the preventable, we first now gauge the progress which we have been able to make uh, in the direction of elimination of uh, malaria till now, the challenges which have been on the pathway. And for that, I'm really delighted to invite uh, Dr. Poonam Khetrabal Singh, who has uh, more than three decades of extensive experience towards the health system strengthening. And she, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the first uh, woman to assume the WHO Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia Regional Office as its uh, regional director. So may I request uh, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh now for uh, her address. Dignitaries on the dais and those among the audience, those who have sent recorded messages, Dr. Mansukh Mandavya ji, who we will hear in a recorded message this morning, experts, partners, colleagues. My greetings to all of you, friends of malaria elimination. Today would be an opportune moment to look at the three Ps of that mission, which is progress, pressures, and the path forward. And I will highlight one single overarching message, which is also the theme of this year's World Malaria Day, which is invest, innovate, and implement for zero malaria. <laughs> First, let's look at the progress which in our region has been guided by our flagship priority identified in 2014, which is eliminating neglected tropical diseases and other diseases on the verge of elimination. At the end of 2020, the WHO Southeast Asia region was the only WHO region to meet each of the global technical strategy milestones, that is, a 40% reduction in malaria case incidence and a 40% reduction in deaths due to malaria. In 2021, five countries of the region were included in WHO's E2025 initiative, which has already been mentioned earlier. And these are Bhutan, DPR Korea, Nepal, Thailand, and Timor-Leste. Commendably, Maldives and Sri Lanka have maintained their malaria-free status certified in 2015 and 2016, respectively. A tremendous achievement. Let us now turn to the pressures, beginning with financing. Since 2010, overall funding in the region has decreased by 36%, mostly on account of reductions at the global level. In 2021, domestic expenditures made up 65% of the total funding, with per person funding significantly varied and not at all reflective of per capita burden. The next challenge I highlight is service disruptions, which in 2021 resulted in an estimated increase of cases in the region by about 7.7%. We must also contend with the reduction in the efficacy of artemisinin-based combination therapies, especially in the greater Mekong subregion, as well as resistance to pyrethroids. Finally, I would like to highlight the challenge of cross-border transmission, which has been the focus of several WHO-led initiatives. Let us now turn to the third P, the most important one, our path forward for success. The WHO Southeast Asia region has five priorities. First, 
strengthening capacity at the subnational level. Two, shifting attention to the periphery with a focus on cross-border collaboration and increased capacity for local response. Third, ensuring adequate and sustained financing for malaria programs. Fourth, transforming surveillance into a core malaria intervention. And fifth, accelerating high impact innovations, not just in diagnostics and treatments, but also in service delivery. Which brings me to my message of today. Together, we must invest, we must innovate, and we must implement with a focus on reaching the most vulnerable first. Globally, children at the poorest households are five times more likely to be infected with malaria. Malaria is also more prevalent among young children whose mothers have a lower level of education and live in rural areas. Reaching these populations is critical for achieving the global technical strategy and the sustainable development goal target. It is critical for delivering our promise of achieving zero malaria for everyone, everywhere in this region. I thank the government of India and APLMA, especially Dr. Sarthak Das, the spirit behind this meeting, and reiterate WHO's ongoing and unmitigated support for a malaria-free future for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your uh, message and uh, taking us through the progress, uh, the pressures, and most importantly, the path forward. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you heard from our respected Joint Secretary the progress which India has been able to make uh, since the time uh, in 2014 when our Honorable Prime Minister had committed with the 17 other heads of states uh, towards uh, ending malaria by 2030 during the 9th East Asia Summit. Much ground has been covered, almost 90% reduction as was mentioned, but then uh, India stands uh, further committed towards completely ending it. And the person who's at the helm of affairs uh, taking it in the ministry is our respected uh, secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Shri Rajesh Bhushanji. I request uh, our respected secretary to please address this August gathering. A uh, very good morning to all of you. Honorable uh, Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, Dr. Mansukh Mandviya, who would be addressing us uh, virtually in course of this meeting today. Honorable Dr. Manik Saha, Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura, India. Dr. R. Lal Thangliana, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of Mizoram, India. We also have with us Honorable Member Neeti, Dr. Vinod K. Paul, um, Honorable Minister of Health, Republic of Fiji, Dr. Antonio Lala Balavu, um, and also on the dais, we have Honorable Minister of Health, Solomon Islands, Dr. Toga Mana, um, Regional Director, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia Region, Dr. Poonam Khetarpal Singh, my colleague in the ministry, Joint Secretary who looks after vector-borne diseases, Sri Rajiv Manji, Chief Executive Officer of APLMA, Dr. Sarthak Das. Ladies and gentlemen, it's um, indeed a pleasure to be part of this uh, conclave, Asia Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination. As you all know that India remains committed to the regional elimination goal of malaria by 2030. We also stand by the commitment which was made by the Honorable Prime Minister of India 
who along with 18 other leaders committed to the goal of a region that is free of malaria by 2030. This was done at the East Asia Summit, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2015. After 2015, India adopted the National Framework for Malaria Elimination which covered a time span of 2016 to 2030. We also adopted a strategic plan, a five-year strategic plan, 2017 to 2022. As a result of these governance changes and a paradigm shift in taking surveillance, taking detection, taking treatment closer to the community, we were able to achieve remarkable progress towards malaria elimination in the recent years. As per the World Malaria Report 2022, we registered almost, as has been repeatedly said before I started my address to you, almost a 90% decline in malaria cases and a 83% decline in deaths between 2015 to 2022. This year, as we know that Asia Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination is being co-hosted by Government of India and the Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance. The overall goals or the overarching goals of this conclave, which we have started today, are to again reaffirm the regional commitment and political commitment at the topmost level to eliminate malaria, also to promote intersectoral collaboration. Why do we need an intersectoral collaboration? Because growingly there is a realization that malaria elimination is not the sole responsibility of ministries of health alone. Malaria elimination cannot be achieved until and unless multiple ministries, multiple stakeholders work in close collaboration with the community. So therefore, this conclave reaffirms a whole of system approach to mal malaria elimination by 2030. I would like to point out here that in India, in 2018, we started world's biggest and largest health sector intervention called Ayushman Bharat, which has three separate sub-programs. And one of the main uh, interventions under Ayushman Bharat is a institution called Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers. Each one of these health and wellness centers are responsible for a population of roughly 30,000 people. And it is through these health and wellness centers, incidentally, we have 160,000 of them today functional across the country. That itself is a significant number and each one of these 160,000 health and wellness centers, uh, as I said, cater to roughly 30,000 population each. So 30,000 divided by 160,000 health and wellness centers, and that number is still increasing. So 160,000 and counting. So the aim was to deliver malaria services through these health and wellness centers. So that is something which is bringing about a lot of positive momentum in the malaria elimination program in our country. In our country, there are eight components of the malaria elimination program that we emphasize. First is early diagnosis and complete treatment. Second is case-based surveillance and rapid response. Third is integrated vector management, including long-lasting insecticidal nets. Fourth is epidemic preparedness and response. Fifth is monitoring and evaluation, which is a continuous process. 
and sixth is advocacy, coordination, and partnerships. Seventh is behavior change communication and community mobilization. And eighth is a continuously evolving program planning and management. In this context, we are presently finalizing our national strategic plan for malaria elimination which covers a time period of 2023 to 2027. And we would be uh, launching this very soon. To sum up, let me draw your attention to three important issues that we consider require uh, our top priority. The first, as I have said earlier, malaria should not be treated just as a public health issue. Malaria is a social challenge, it is economic challenge, it is political challenge. And since it is a multifaceted challenge, therefore this requires cooperation of all stakeholders. So active collaboration from ministries and departments will help us in achieving our target, which is the last mile elimination. The second uh, thematic issue on which I would like to draw your attention to is that malaria elimination cannot be achieved and cannot be sustained in isolation by any one country alone. So therefore, cross-border collaboration becomes extremely, extremely important. In India, we are collaborating with our neighboring countries like Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, so on and so forth. But this should be a global focus. The third thematic issue on which I would like to draw your attention is that all the elimination, surveillance, and um, awareness facilities need to be taken to the doorstep of the community. You cannot expect the community and families to come to health facilities. And that is where, as I said earlier, the Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers are playing a major part. So having drawn your attention to these three thematic areas, I hope that the deliberations today and tomorrow would be mutually productive and beneficial to all of us. I thank you for having given me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, sir, for sharing your thoughts and taking us through the very impressive uh, journey of India of malaria elimination and your constructive uh, suggestions and recommendations. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we now invite uh, the experience, the learnings, the thoughts, and uh, further achievements of uh, our distinguished uh, guest speakers in the fight against malaria in their respective countries. I would like to first request and invite Excellency Dr. Kulwik uh, Togumana, the Honorable Minister of Health, the Solomon Islands. Excellencies, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, greetings and well wishes to all distinguished guests present here today at this auspicious uh, high-level regional meeting for malaria elimination. My sincerest acknowledgement to the Government of India and my colleague Dr. Mansuk Mandavia, Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India, for graciously hosting us for this meeting. May I also extend my greetings to fellow honorable ministers, donor partners, and also senior government officials of the countries attending this meeting. Distinguished delegates, at the 2018 London Malaria Summit, the then Prime Minister of Solomon Islands demonstrated political leadership and committed to the goal of malaria elimination by 2030. It played a critical role towards a higher level meeting of whole government, 
whole of government, whole of society, and development partners to re-examine the path to malaria elimination for Solomon Islands. The principal outcome of that uh, meeting was the Solomon Islands Roadmap for Malaria Elimination, which recommitted the country to malaria elimination province by province with a broad vision of achieving zero locally transmitted cases by 2030 and WHO certification three years later. Distinguished delegates, in October of 2022, Honorable Manasseh Sogovare, our current Prime Minister, joined with 22 other heads of government from Asia Pacific region to recommit to the global, to, to the goal of eliminating malaria across the region by 2030. I thank Asia Pacific leaders, uh, Malaria Alliance, for their continued advocacy efforts to ensure malaria elimination remain a high priority agenda amongst the heads of states of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, Solomon Islands had made good progress against malaria between 20, uh, 2000 and 2014, reducing by half the number of malaria cases. However, from 2015 onwards, there were year-on-year -year increases in reported cases. In the past two years, the country has seen an increase in malaria incidence by 8.4%. The Solomon Islands accounted for the second highest number of cases in the Western Pacific region, contributing 9% of the overall reported cases. The annual parasite incidence has increased by 11% over three years and a tripling from 2015 baseline of API. Despite these increases uh, in positive cases of malaria, the number of deaths reported as due to malaria remained low, with nine deaths reported in 2021 and also nine in 2022. The proportion of cases due to uh, falciparum or mixed infectious uh, P. vivax remains stable, with majority of cases attributed to P. vivax alone. However, for 2022, there are indications of an increase in falciparum cases. This is alarming considering falciparum is more often associated with severe disease and death than P. vivax. Distinguished uh, delegates, malaria disease burdens vary widely between provinces and islands within provinces and has been subject to change in recent years. Resurgence of malaria in Solomon Islands has been attributed to a number of factors, and to name a few, these include cessation of residual spraying in 2015, decline in funding for the malaria program, more rapid than expected decline in insecticide bioavailability in long-lasting insecticide nets distributed in 2015, and stock out of malaria commodities. In addition to this, persistent challenge, challenges including logistical support, such as transportation, complex and burdensome financial management processes, and limited trained human resources in remote islands impinge on timely malaria and service delivery and response. Distinguished guests, at our recent midterm review of the malaria program, it was highlighted that if health systems issues persist, especially commodity stockouts, financial constraints, and inappropriate human resourcing, malaria cases and deaths will increase, and it will not be possible to eliminate malaria infection from the Solomon Islands. Distinguished guests, despite these many health systems and other challenging issues prevailing in our country, the Solomon Islands government, through the Ministry of Health, and medical services reaffirms its commitment with using a whole of government, whole of society, with a call for support from our development and technical partners working together to make the gains, achievements, and achievements towards 2030 elimination targets. In closing, may I take this opportunity to sincerely thank the Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance for implementing a very significant but strategic platform for the region by which 
regional health ministers can assemble as we are here, as we, as we are today to share experiences and challenges. This is a rare opportunity for us to regroup, renew our commitments, and carefully strategize to efficiently utilize our limited resources and capabilities to achieve the noble cause of eliminating malaria by 2030. I would also like to extend my sincere gratitude to the government of Australia for supporting the Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance platform. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the government of Solomon Islands is fully committed to the goal of making the country and the region malaria free for us and that of our future generation to flourish. And I am posi positive that all our leaders present today share that same sentiment. We are in this journey together and together with our key strategic partners we are aiming to achieve a malaria-free region because if we do, we can deliver the region we all dream of, a region of free malaria. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you once again for your attention. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you, Excellency, for sharing with us the progress in your uh, country the existing interventions and your further commitment towards zero malaria. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Solomon Islands would like to uh, further extend, uh, present a special gift to the government of India. Uh, that's uh, from their side, a token of gratitude, appreciation to the government of India for uh, hosting here. So uh, may I request uh, our uh, respected secretary, sir, Sri Rajesh Bhushanji, to kindly accept this special gift from Solomon Islands. So thanking uh, everyone from Solomon Islands for this very gracious gift to India. Thank you. Thank you once again uh, to Solomon Islands. Thank you. And now may I request Excellency Dr. Antonio Lala Balavu, the Honorable Minister of Health and Medical Services, Republic of Fiji, for his address. The Excellencies. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning to you all. I'm indeed honored to be invited to this Asia Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination and to be part of this uh, high level meeting discussing malaria elimination within the Asia Pacific region. Ladies and gentlemen, I recognize the experts in this forum and I'm here to learn as much as possible and to give a perspective from a small island state in the Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Your Excellencies, malaria is not present in Fiji. We do not have any malarial vectors, Anopheles mosquitoes, but rather we have the disease which have been imported by our nationals who have traveled to malarial countries and got beaten by the malarial vectors. It has been a struggle in trying to keep Fiji malaria free since it is one of the most tourist destinations in the Pacific, and in-flight cargo ships continue to visit our shores frequently. Most Pacific Island countries are located in the tropics, where there is an abundance of mosquitoes with the potential to carry debilitating or life-threatening vector-borne diseases. 
three Melanesian countries in, in which malaria is endemic to Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and Vanuatu. But the threat posed by the spread of malaria gives the issues of a broader significance to the Pacific region. Although the, the disease was nearly eradicated in the Pacific in the 1970s, it is no longer in retreat. There is a need for prompt and concerted action on malaria at the national, regional, and international levels if the public health concerns arising from the disease are to be adequately addressed. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the Pacific Plan, which was adopted by the leaders of the 16, 16 Pacific Island countries in 2005, is a roadmap for strengthening regional cooperation. The plan aims to promote sustainable development in parts through improving the health of the Pacific population. Although the plan specifically identifies the importance of controlling and non-communicable disease and one communicable disease, dengue, notably absent from the implementation strategies or any reference to malaria, which continues to have a deleterious effect on the health and well-being of some Pacific population. The ge geographical distribution of malaria in the Pacific is closely linked to the distribution of the Anopheles vectors that transmits the parasite. There is no malaria in the Polynesian group of countries. There is no malaria as well in Micronesian countries. However, a vector survey conducted by the US Navy revealed that a Nophilus mosquito was present on the island of Guam. For a country without malaria, I am able to share experience about vector control, in particular the dengue, which can equally, equally, equally be applied for malaria. Vector control is highly effective, I'm sure we all know this, as a way to reduce malarial transmission and it is a vital component of malarial control and elimination strategies. WHO currently recommends deployment of either insecticide-treated nets, ITNs, or indoor residual spraying for malarial, malarial vector control in, in most areas at risk of malaria. In the Fiji context, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, our environmental health officers are mandated to carry out vector surveillances and control throughout the year. This exercise involves the collection of label samples of mosquitoes for identification. While much emphasis is focused on dengue vectors, very little or no focus is done in the surveillance of Anopheles mosquitoes or its larvae since we don't have the disease. Fiji has a legislation, a quarantine act, which stipulates the means of prevention of malaria into our country. It is also mandated for our health and environmental health officers to play the lead role in such prevention. I believe that most of you sitting here may have experienced this exercise. So while you travel into Fiji from the malarious countries, as soon as, as, soon as your plane stops at the aero bridge, the first officers that will enter the planes are our environmental health officers which they cans of sprays. They will close the plane and hold it for five minutes while they carry out the spraying inside and the plane while passengers are still inside. The main aim of that exercise is to kill any malarial vector which may have accidentally jumped into the plane and may have taken a free ride to Fiji. Once all the holes inside the planes are carefully sprayed, the environmental health officers will then wait for five minutes, which the plane is allowed to open for passengers to disembark. But we also do proper programs for uh, shipping as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, there is a need for an urgent and concerted effort for malaria elim elimination in order to eradication in the longer term at the national, regional, and international level. There is urgency in meeting malaria less DG target 3.3 by 2030 to end epidemics of AIDS, TB, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases, and combat hepatitis, waterborne diseases, and other communicable diseases. No size fits all in determining the array of control of tools. Therefore, countries must approach with this with a mix of available tools tailored to local context for a maximum benefit. This is more so for PNG, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, and other Pacific Island countries should not be complacent given the recent example of introduction of Anopheles mosquito into New Caledonia. So I call upon all of us to 
evaluate our current year education and elimination plans, strengthen malarial surveillance and information management to inform decision making and planning, strengthen community engagement and education that properly aligns to cultures, values and beliefs, seek support of experts and partners, continue to seek financial support and assistance through resource mobilization efforts at national and international level, support development of new vaccines and tools through research and development to ensure adequate supplies of appropriate vaccines to small island developing states such as Pacific Island country states. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, malaria elimination needs the leveraging of all experiencing gain through the COVID-19 pandemic. It is my hope that we leave no one behind in our malaria elimination. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for sharing with us this very impressive uh, journey and interventions which uh, your government has been taking towards a malaria-free Fiji. Thank you. May I now request, in fact, we have a recorded message from Excellency Dr. Dante Saxono Harbubono, the Honorable Vice Minister of Health, Republic of Indonesia. If you can play the message, please. Excellency, Honorable Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, since French army doctors Alphonse Leveron discovered the parasite that causes malaria 142 years ago, the disease has rapidly spread across our border. Today, malaria has infected one fourth of the world population, which is fourth time the size of the COVID pandemic. Including Indonesia, we have fought a long battle against malaria and ranking the second and as the country with highest new cases in Southeast Asia region. This must be changed. Our goal is to eradicate this disease by the years 2030. Excellency, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Recently, Indonesia has made huge progress in bringing down the burden of malaria despite the disruption of malaria services due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of Indonesia saw continue good progress toward malaria elimination, with about 72% of Indonesians, 515 districts and multi parties have achieved cessation in the Guinness transmission of malaria as certified by Ministry of Health. Excellency, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, majority of malaria burden in Indonesia come from the province of Papua the eastern side of Indonesia. In 2022, 93% of Indonesia malaria cases come from Papua. Uneven distribution of malaria through to Indonesia was to show that the effort to eliminate malaria will require intensified focus on last mile population, the vulnerable community living in the forest, fringes bordering and hard to reach area. Also, it will require the concerns of effort from the whole of government beyond Ministry of Health and the whole society to eliminate malaria by making approach that reflect the context of the community and strong commitment from leader all the way from the head of the state to the head of the village. Currently, our ongoing effort focus on accelerating malaria elimination concentrated in Papua, Sumba, and East Kalimantan, with specific intervention such as mass bed net campaigns, much drug administration in selected districts, and specific approach for migrate mobile population. Excellency Honorable Guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
the government of Indonesia is fully committed to support the effort needed on accelerating malaria burden reduction and looking forward to work together on achieving Asia Pacific free from malaria. On behalf of the Ministry of Health, I would like to thank Embassy of India in partnership with Asia Pacific Leader Malaria Alliance, ALTMA, for hosting this prestigious meeting. I would also like to express my gratitude and respect to the host and significant colleagues from the ALTMA member country as well as other distinguished guests. Let us work together to create safer life for our people and world free from malaria. Like an old proverb said, if you want to go far, always go together. I thank you. Thank you to the Honorable uh, Vice Minister of Indonesia for his uh, commitment and message. Our uh, next uh, esteemed speaker is Excellency Dr. Jaleha Binti Mustafa, the Honorable Minister of Health, Malaysia. Once again, we have the recorded message. Malaysia would like to thank the Government of India and the Asia-Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance, APMA, for inviting Malaysia to address the Asia-Pacific leaders that are gathered here today. Malaysia would also like to thank APMA for arranging this special video session as Malaysia is unable to attend the meeting in person due to prior commitments. Malaysia has achieved zero indigenous human malaria for five consecutive years since 2018. Besides China, Malaysia has achieved the E2020 targets that was envisioned by the World Health Organization's Global Malaria Elimination Program, GMEP. During the pandemic, Malaysia's malaria program remained resilient and has successfully moved into the next phase of prevention of malaria re-establishment, POR, in line with the WHO and GMEP recommendation. Most of the malaria activities were harmonized with the movement control order that was implemented. The government ensured that key malaria activities and commodities such as malaria diagnostic, treatment, disease surveillance, outbreak management system and long-lasting insecticidal net distribution were uninterrupted. Currently, Malaysia is working with the GMEP and WHO's Western Pacific Regional Office on strategies to mitigate the ongoing transmission of zoonotic malaria and bring down the risk of transmission to a negligible level so that the certifications of malaria elimination could be granted to Malaysia the soonest possible. Moving forward, Malaysia looks forward to new elements within the certifications of elimination process by WHO and hopes that the malaria elimination process reaches a new milestones in the near future. Lastly, we hope to see everyone at the next event. Thank you and have a pleasant day. So once again, another inspirational journey and work, uh, com the message coming from Malaysia. And now requesting uh, Dr. R. Lal Tangliana, the Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare of Mizoram Government of India for his address. The Honorable Union Minister, Dr. Mansuk, is not here at the moment, but, uh, and Dr. Vinod Paul, the Honorable Member of the National Institution for Transforming India, we call the Tia Yok, is a dynamic and very, very eminent scholar in health. And Honorable Chief Minister of Tipura, and other able ministers from Solomon Iceland, government of uh, Solomon Iceland, and honorable minister of Republic of Fiji, and honorable vice minister of health, Republic of Indonesia, and honorable health minister of Malaysia, and Dr. Rajesh Bushant, our beloved union secretary for health and family welfare, government of India, Dr. Sarthak Dust, CEO, Asian Pacific Leader, Malaria Alliance, 
and Dr. Punam, the Regional Director of World Health Organization, South Asian region. Dignitaries and ladies and gentlemen, I said a very good morning to all of you. This is my first opportunity to address. I'm extremely grateful for your invitation to attend and to address for a short while, you know, my first opportunity of this golden, you know, forum. I am really, really grateful. I am the senior most health minister in India. This, I am completing my six terms in my capacity. And maybe because of that, I have been invited this morning to address. It. But in fact, I am not a health. But I'm not like a medical doctor. In fact, I'm a professor in the university, recently retired. Anyway, this is a, really a golden opportunity for me, you know, like the conclave, to address the issue particularly about, you know, malaria. In Mizoram, you know, I just would like to introduce the state of Mizoram. <clears throat> that it's the most peaceful state in India, okay? Most peaceful state in India, no insurgency, no terrorism, free from domestic, you know, violence. <laughs> this is a state where you should definitely, you know, come. And the second most literate state in India, next to Kerala. I was education minister for eight years, during 1998 to 2008. And I tried to defeat the state of Kerala in the level of literacy, but it's now difficult. But the day may come when we may defeat the state of Kerala. If they are here, please excuse me, but this is my political will, OK? And Alain, predominantly, dominated by Christians, more than 90% Christian state, and a land of golden opportunities for agriculture, horticulture, and many other, you know, economic activities can be taken up. And I'm very happy that Dr. Vinod Paul, you know, capacity, he will be coming on 15 of next month with a good team, okay? We very much welcome once again. And not only that, it's the best performing street in India during the dreaded COVID-19 period, you know. We have done a, a very, very remarkable, you know, uh, performance. And a state having the lowest IMR. IMR means infant mortality in the country, which stood at three out of 1,000. You may like to congratulate me. <laughs> and not only that, the Niti Ayok has recently ranked my beloved state, Mizoram, number one, sir. Uh, the first ranking position, you know, we are in the top in terms of health outcomes in India among the small state in India every year since 2017 to 18, continuously. This is what the achievement we have. And what I would like to mention this morning is very different. We appreciate your initiative for elimination of malaria, but uh, Malaria cases is not exactly negligible, but uh, we lost only 10 to 15 lives during the last two years in Mizoram. But whereas, I would like to make the statement that uh, COVID-19 caused and killed the lives of more than 65 lakhs of precious life in the world. This is very, very unfortunate. 
And not only that, I would like to make a statement that, you know, in our state like Mizoram, and may not be only in the state, but in other parts of the country even, you know, that the debt caused by stock, heart attack, is really, really amazing. I really wondered, even the young people, the age of 18 to 35, are not spared by stock and heart attack. And not only that, we lost many lives due to cancer, diabetics, and some other serious illness. This is, you know, in civil society, this is the scenario. I don't know what happened in Malaysia, Fuji, and Indonesia and other parts of the world, but in India, particularly in Northeast, this is really a big issue which we should not spare out. We should address. So in the presence of the regional director of WHO, he's here, I would like to mention this. Let us not address only, you know, malaria. Malaria may be a minor issue, but in fact, this is a good approach that we should eliminate malaria by 2030. I fully support it, 110% support, okay, from my state. We will definitely win. The day will come that we will eliminate malaria. But at the same time, we should not forget to address other serious issue apart from malaria. That's what I would like to point out this morning. This is really important. And lastly, but not the least, I really appreciate once again the initiative taken by the you know, Asian Pacific leaders conclaved on malaria the organizers, and this, you know, people who are seriously involved in this. And at the same time, what I would like to mention in the presence of my beloved colleagues, particularly coming from abroad, is that the bureaucrats the government machineries leveled, they will definitely take serious initiative at all level. But what is really important is the political will. This is really important. Political will. If we have the political will, there is nothing impossible. Impossible is the word which is found in the Dictionary of Fool, am I right? So we should definitely wind up malaria, not only that. Please know that the serious initiative which need to be addressed at other levels is really important. And particularly, I would like to request the WHO to take up this issue, stalk heart attack, cancer, and many other issues. This is the right opportunity and the right forum that we should not stop of holding this kind of, this should not be the last meeting. I would like to request the authority to take up other issues relating to, apart from malaria, and thank you so much, and I hope that the deliberation and the discussion and the technical session that we are having in the afternoon will definitely enhance the knowledge, and not only that, followed the action.
Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the address from the Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura, another uh, beautiful state of uh, India, which is among the seven sister states of India. Tripura, inviting the Honorable Chief Minister, Professor Dr. Manik Saha. Namaskar and good morning to all. In this uh, August gatherings of Asia Pacific leaders conclave on malaria elimination 2023, hosted by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, in partnership with Asia Pacific leaders, Malaria Alliance on Dias. Honorable Dr. Althangli Anna, Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Department, Government of Mizoram. Honorable Dr. Atunio Lala Balabau, Minister of Health and Medical Service, Republic of Fiji. Honorable Dr. Kuluik Thungamana, Minister of Health and Family Services. Solomon Island Government, Sri Rajesh Bhushan, Secretary, Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, Regional Director, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia Region, and Dr. Sartung Das, CEO, Asia Pacific Leaders, Malaria Alliance, and Sri Rajiv. Maji, Joint Secretary, Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, and of Dias, all the special dignitaries and ladies and gentlemen. I am an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, you know. So I was a teacher in a medical college. My journey starts in politics from 2016, I was the president of my party in the state. Then I, I have been elected for Rajya Sabha MP. Then only for three days I was in Rajya Sabha. First day I took the oath. Second day I participate, participated in one discussion. Third day the Rajya Sabha was adjourned. And then I came back to my state and I became Chief Minister. That was my journey. Second time I worked, that was my first time and second time Chief Minister of Tripura. Tripura is one of the smallest states of northeastern region, that is Australaxmi of India. The total population presently is about 40 lakhs only. It has got eight districts, out of which one or two district is, uh, is or are prone for malaria. In the year 2014, we had experienced a devastating outbreak of malaria when 51,240 persons were detected with malaria. And 96 believable lives were lost. Screening for blood sample was only 6.8% at that time, and sample positivity rate was 15.7%. In 2016, 32,525 persons were detected with malaria, and 14 persons died. Screening for blood sample was only 11.7% of population at that time, and sample positivity rate was 7.2%. Since then, we have gradually scaled up by screening which has now increased to 22.15%. In 2022, which is almost double than that of 2016, number of cases came down to 12,771 cases, being one-fourth than that 
in 2014, and sample positivity rate came down to 0.23% in 2022. As for strategies such as distribution of 10.06 lakh long-lasting this insecticide-treated bed nets in 2015-16, 1.80 lakhs in 2018-19, and 9.25 lakh in 2019-20 was done. Another 1.80 lakhs are available and ready to be distributed in 2023-24. 9.25 lakhs are expected to be supplied in 2024 to cover the targeted population. As for the latest uh, drug policy, drugs like artemether and lume fentrin for PF malaria are being used with primaquine for three days by the state, for PB malaria chloroquine for three days being used, and primaquine for 14 days is being used for eradication of parasite in PB malaria. The severe and complicated cases are being treated with injection, RTA sumenate, and for pregnant women, quinine sulfate tablet is being used orally and quinine injection is being used. Yes, for measures, vector control measures are being taken up in the form of larvicidal fish, then temophone spray, and the awareness activities are carried out on all over the state with focus to endemic areas through various activities such as the community awareness meetings, intersectoral convergence meetings, and school awareness programs for reaching the vulnerable population and most effectively delivering the message. With all around support from the Government of India Global Fund through National Vector Borne Disease Control Program, technical support from all the scientific organizations like ICMR, we are better equipped because we are now having around three cases per 1,000 population with a cure rate of almost 100%. With a robust primary health care system in the state of Tripura, having 104 primary health centers, 1,018 sub-centers upgraded to health and wellness center with presence of almost one sub-centers in every village, and 7,728 Asha Karmi, that is sisters in the state, we have a very close access to the community residing in the far-flung areas. Under the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, with an all-round development of health sector, strengthening of block-level laboratory, surveillance systems, and upscaling of tertiary care level through Pradhan Mantri Ayushman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission, we are now in a position to envision to the elimination of malaria in Tripura too. I sincerely believe that with the intensified effort, we can definitely achieve malaria elimination in line with national timeline of malaria el elimination by 2027 by achieving a target of zero indigenous malaria cases in Tripura. With warm regards, I extend my sincere thanks to you all, and especially thank, special thanks to Honorable Union Minister of India, Health and Family Welfare, Sri Manshuk Man ji. Thank you all. Namaskar. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, we thank all our distinguished guests of honor for uh, sharing with us uh, their very focused approach and efforts which they have been taking towards uh, ending malaria in their region. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the special address and we seek the views of Dr. Vinod Paul, a very renowned pediatrician, medical health exponent, medical scientist uh, who heads the health nutrition and the HRD verticals at Niti Aayog. And then he has been instrumental in formulating uh, the various ambitious uh, health programs of the government of India, the Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, the Ayushman uh, Bharat uh, Health and Wellness Centers, which have played a very important role, and also the Poshan Abhiyan. We seek the views and guidance of Dr. Vinod K. Paul.
Namaste. Good morning. Honorable Dr. Mansukh Manviyachi, Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare. Honorable Professor Dr. Manik Sahaji, the Chief Minister of Tripura. Honorable Dr. Lal Singh Yanaji, Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of Mizoram. Minister of Health, Government of Malaysia, who spoke through video. Conferencing Vice Minister of Health, Republic of Indonesia, who delivered a recorded message. Dr. Antonio Shalabalavuji, Minister of Health and Medical Services, Republic of Fiji. Excellency Dr. Kulvik Togamanaji, Minister of Health and Medical Services, Government of Solomon Islands. Excellency Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, Regional Director, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia Region. Shri Rajesh Pushan, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Colleague Dr. Sarthak Das, CEO, APLMA. Shri Rajesh Rajiv Manji Ji. Distinguished invitees, excellencies, dignitaries, partner institutions, donor agencies, NGOs, and stakeholders in eliminating malaria worldwide who are present here. I'm honored to be here. And on behalf of Government of India, once again, we very, very warmly welcome our distinguished invitees. In this year of G20 Presidency of India, it is truly a remarkable moment for us to talk about eliminating a dreaded disease which has haunted humanity for, um, for thousands and thousands of years. We stand here to envision a world which is prosperous, peaceful, healthy, where there are equal opportunities. And the G20 motto, namely, one earth, one family, one future, encompasses this. We are looking forward to a world where there is no terrorism, there are no wars, there is no strife, there is no violence. We are also looking forward to a future, a near future, by 2030, where we are in there shall be no malaria. And not only malaria, but we also have responsibility to deliver on other health-related agendas of eliminating diseases by 2030, including tuberculosis, lymphatic filariasis, leprosy, measles, and rubella. So these seven years are very important, extremely important. And what works for one, very often, many aspects of that work for other disease control measures. So this morning, we pledge to work toward eliminating a, a dreaded disease to make malaria history, but we are also readying ourselves because we are common stakeholders to achieve other health-related sustainable development goals. In 2015, Honorable Prime Minister of India joined other leaders to endorse the Asia-Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance. And today we see that this alliance has played a very important role in enhancing visibility toward eliminating malaria by a specific dateline. I applaud the work that has been done by, by the Alliance. And we move forward from here with renewed resolve and call to action. Very honored that this call to action will emanate from India, it will emanate from, from Delhi. The overarching goal, I understand, of our conclave is to reaffirm Asia-Pacific regional commitment to eliminate malaria, and in doing so, focus attention on neglected and vulnerable communities in the fight against this disease, and to promote, above all, intersectoral collaboration to 
achieve a whole of system fight against this disease. A point that has been made by all my previous speakers in one way or the other, whole of system approach. And I think that's the key theme of the day. As has been stated, but I wish to bring it to again to your kind attention, according to the World Malaria Report, Southeast Asia region has witnessed a drop in malaria cases by 76% from 22.8 million in 2000 to 5.4 million in 2021, and also reduction, a reduction in malaria incidence by 82% during this period of time. That's a great achievement, and the credit goes to all the nations and the people of the region. Under the visionary leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister Modi, India has achieved a remarkable progress and success toward malaria elimination in recent years. As has been stated, and I wish to re-stress, that India registered an 85% decline in malaria cases and 83% decline in malaria-related deaths between 2015 to 2022. We are proud of this achievement of people of India. Our goal is to eliminate malaria throughout the country by 2030 and to maintain malaria-free status in areas where malaria transmission has been, infected, has been interrupted and to prevent reintroduction of malaria from within or from outside as well. The vision of India of today is to walk with the world shoulder to shoulder by demonstrating success against various challenges affecting our global village. The policies of a confident India are evident in the field of malaria and we look forward to joining hands to strengthen the response of the world in this regard in our own way, and I'll make a couple of suggestions in that regard. We would like to focus on high, in high burden areas, in particular five states, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, and Orissa, to ensure that the difficult to handle situations in regard to malaria are given due emphasis. The intersectoral collaboration starts at the community level at the village level, and we have the mechanism of village health and sanitation committees who have been charged and mobilized to bring about community level change in their behavior to address the problem of malaria. We have reached nearly saturation level of uh, coverage of, uh, of, of the interventions such as the, the nets as well as uh, the sprays and so on. We have made significant progress, but the transmission of malaria is still going on in some pockets of India. We heard about stellar stories of success from the Honorable Chief Minister of Tripura and the Honorable Health Minister of Mizoram, how we are handling at the, at the micro level, at the, at the, at the district and the sub-district level. And the best practices that you bring to our attention in, this, in, the, in, the, in the coming deliberations of this meeting would be so very useful for us to refine our strategy, which we are currently de developing. And uh, my colleague, Shri Rajesh Pushanji referred to it. So our strategy would be, would be, would be very uh, eminently uh, endorsing some of the other ideas that you bring to the table. Our challenges are in the areas that are difficult, urban areas, uh, population, migrant population, uh, which moves, and above all, our very important and special geographies and populations uh, inhabited by our tribal people, our tribal brothers and sisters. Here, the importance for us is to work across the ministries, in particular, Ministry of Tribal Welfare, in particular, Rural Ministry of Rural Development, water and sanitation. And of course, work deeply and very closely as one team, one team India between the union government and the state governments. I wish to emphasize here that India has made a significant progress, as you well know, in the sphere of sanitation and, and water, safe water. 
a special program of the honorable prime minister har ghar nal jal every house to receive potable tap water is making huge progress and this has a bearing on this particular disease but also other diseases from 17% coverage in rural india of tap water supply in less than 4 years we are now at 55% plus so other aspects of development are also feeding into positive health including addressing communicable diseases addressing waterborne diseases and so on i at the end of uh, my presentation i request and i urge that we take into consideration four points two of those points have already been made one to work to embrace the philosophy of whole of government whole of society and whole of system approach St i strongly urge the sentiment that has come from the dais more than uh, more than once i also endorse strongly the point that has been made by secretary health that we cannot eliminate malaria till we work together across borders proximate borders and distal borders because indigenous circulation may go away but in connected geographies exogenous circulation would peep in from time to time and that's one challenge uh, some of our border states have to which a reference has been made so these two i like to strongly endorse but i also like to add two more points and these are fun that are endeavor for research innovation and finding implementation pathways for behavior change and to address the complex problem of eliminating malaria and in difficult situations and geographies must also go on we need to learn systematically how to change behavior how to ensure that there is excellent surveillance when the geographies are tough and widespread and difficult to reach so implementation research research to change behavior getting people along would be needed and these are to be context specific because we are dealing with specific geographies and people and linked to this is a research issue is part b that our journey for vaccine for malaria must be pursued relentlessly we need the vaccine we need the vaccine not necessarily only for india we may not but the disease can research disease continues to rage in other regions in particular africa and therefore to have a, an additional weapon in our arsenal against this disease would still be useful and here given our r and d research and development base in india our research laboratories and our vaccine industry we offer to you to please join hands with our system to create test and scale up an effective and more than one effective vaccine uh, if there are such uh, such candidates available and we know significant research has transpired in recent past and last but not the least i'll also like to offer india's digital might to be available for eliminating malaria across nations we need we have a, a great potential of using digital tools in making a difference for surveillance for monitoring for targeting and and delivering medicines delivering pro medical pro products if you believe through this collaboration this thinking that such solutions will help elimination of malaria in our country and beyond let's work together we have a strong strong capabilities in the sphere of digital health we would be very very honored and delighted to serve and offer those solutions as open source products for you with these words i thank you once again for have decided to having decided to hold this conclave here and very looking forward to the deliberations and indeed we would hope that you would have a pleasant stay and of and we hope that you will come back again to visit us with these words let me thank you and express success wish you success in the in the, in your deliberations thank you very much jai hind
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul, for your very valuable suggestions and recommendations in our uh, fight uh, to end uh, malaria and your very emphatic message towards uh, our shared responsibility for shared prosperity. Thank you, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we invite the leadership of the Honorable Chair of the Conclave, uh, Dr. Mansook Manviaji, the Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, who's also the Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India. We have the message from our Honorable Minister. Can we have the message, please? Namaskar. I welcome all the dignitaries, industries leaders, and senior officers for various countries and leading international organizations to the Asia-Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination 2023. The overarching goals of this Leaders Conclave is to reform regional commitments to eliminate malaria, focus attention on neglected and vulnerable communities in the fight against malaria and promote intersectoral collaboration to ensure a wall-up system buying towards malaria elimination by 2030. India is committed to malaria elimination by 2030 in response to the global dairy and call by WHO to eliminate malaria by the end 2030. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, has been among the global leaders who endorsed the malaria elimination roadmap of Asia Pacific leaders. Malaria Alliance at the East Asia Summit held in malaria in 2015. It was then that the Alliance leadership set the goal of ensuring that the regional becomes free of malaria by 2030. Malaria has been a significant public health problem in India in the past. Still, India has made remarkable progress towards malaria elimination in recent years and has received recognition for its efforts. It was the only high burden, high impact country in the Southeast Asia region to report a decline in malaria cases in 2020 compared to 2019. India registered an 85.1% decline in malaria cases and 83.36% decline in deaths from 2015 to 2022 and held the line against malaria during the pandemic. The 126 districts have reported zero indigenous cases till 2021. Malaria elimination strategy in India has several components including early diagnosis and complete treatment, surveillance, integrated vector management, and behavior change communication. The two most important factors behind India's success on the malaria elimination front is the rejuvenated political commitment and strengthened technical leadership. Our health workers, especially the ASHA workers, are trained to recognize the sign and symptoms of malaria and strengthen our surveillance systems to respond quickly to outbreaks. Our government's various health initiatives such, such as Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arugya Yojana, Aishman Bharat Health and Wellness Center, 
Aishman Bharat Digital Mission are contributing immensely towards strengthening India's fight against malaria. Technology and innovative solutions have been part and parcel of our fight against malaria. From this August forum, I urge the scientific community to develop new ways of dealing with emerging disease and carrying out research in developing new treatments which are cost-effective, accessible and quality for a healthier and prosperous planet. Malaria is not just a public health issue but also a social, economic and political challenge that require the cooperation of all stakeholders. In line with India G20 Presidency mantra of One Earth, One Family, One Future, India is conducting various bilateral cross-border meetings with neighboring countries to develop a coordination mechanism between countries and implement strategies to achieve malaria elimination across borders. India is committed to eliminating malaria from the country by 2030 and we are committed to sharing our resources, knowledge and learnings with other countries as well as their mi mission to end the disease. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Honourable Chair of the Conclave, the Honourable Minister, Dr. Mansukh Mandviaji. And uh, as we express our uh, thanks and gratitude uh, to each of our distinguished speakers of the inaugural session for sharing their success stories and further the recommendations, I would now like to request uh, Dr. Tanu Jain, the Director, National Centre for Vector-Borne Disease Control from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India to kindly propose a formal vote of thanks. Namaste to all the dignitaries on and off the dais. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. It is my proud privilege and honor to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, on the conclusion of the inaugural session of the Asia-Pacific Leaders Conclave on Malaria Elimination 2023. First and foremost, I would like to express my deep gratitude and sincere thanks to the Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India, Dr. Mansukh Mandaviyaji. His dynamic vision and direction constantly keeps us on our toes to achieve the best health parameters for the country, including the goal for malaria elimination by 2030. I express my profound gratitude to the Honorable Chief Minister Tripura, Dr. Manik Saha, for taking his valuable time out and gracing this event. Sir, with your support, commitment, and direction, we are confident that we can make Tripura malaria-free. Special thanks to Honorable Health Minister Mizoram for his esteemed presence. Sir, your support and commitment would be crucial in curbing down the malaria burden in the state of Mizoram. Deep gratitude and heartfelt thanks to the Honorable Member Niti Ayog, Dr. V.K. Paul, sir, for gracing this event and presiding over it. Thank you, sir, for your esteemed presence. Your direction and advice would be critical and crucial in the journey to the last mile of malaria elimination. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency, Dr. Rato Antonio Rabisi, Minister of Health, Republic of Fiji, and His Excellency, Dr. Kalvik Togamana, Minister of Health, Solomon Island, for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. We are hopeful that with our constant efforts, we will be able to make our region malaria-free. It is my pleasant duty to record our deepest appreciation to His Excellency, Dr. Date Saxono, Honorable Vice Minister of Health, Republic of Indonesia, 
and Her Excellency Dr. Zaliha Mustafa, Honorable Minister of Health Malaysia, for updating us on their continued commitment towards the regional goal of malaria elimination. My gratitude and thanks to our respected Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Republic of India, Shri Rajesh Bhushanji, for providing his constant support and guidance to the program. Sir, this has enabled the country to curb malaria burden to the extent that we are hopeful for eliminating this disease from our country by 2030. Partnerships play a key role in the elimination venture, and WHO has a crucial role in bringing the region together. Cordial thanks to Regional Director, World Health Organization CRO, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, for her gracious presence and direction. We express our deep sense of gratitude to the program directors and other dignitaries from Nepal, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Vietnam, Solomon Island, and Fiji, who have come from various destinations to attend this event and for their continued commitments towards the regional goal of malaria elimination. Heartfelt thanks to Dr. Sri Rajiv Manji, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, for his overall guidance in the program and for organizing this program, sir. You have strongly supported us and we really thank you from the bottom of the heart. I would like to thank the CEO of Palma, Dr. Sarthak Das, for co-hosting this conclave, which is now chaired by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. And I wish to place on record the contribution of his whole team, including Ms. Amita Chebi, Dr. Harsh Rajwansi, Ms. Dimple Natali, Ms. Sagri Negi, Mr. Nitin Berry, and Ms. Manisha Vadwa for their contribution to the event. They have really worked relentlessly. A wide round of applause and thanks to the entire team of the National Vector Center for Vector-Borne Diseases Control, especially the Malaria Division, Dr. C.S. Agrawal, Dr. Rinku Sharma, Dr. Vinod Chaudhary for putting in their hard work behind this event and making it a success. I would also like to thank the representatives from WHO India, Global Fund, National Center for Disease Control, ICMR, teaching and training and research institutes, eminent experts and representatives from the regional offices, states and partner agencies for joining us today. I wish to thank the media division of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ms. Manisha Verma, ADG Media and Communication, and her team, the SNA division, the VBD division, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, IEC division of NCVBDC, uh, Mr. Sanjay, the hotel staff for their excellent hospitality and event management team. If time is money, then today you have invested millions for us. Thank you to all of you for making this event successful. And lastly, I would urge all of you to visit the Ayushman Bharat, NCVBDC, Mera Bharat, and Appman and Apalma stalls, which are placed outside. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude the inaugural session. I would like to request our uh, distinguished dignitaries uh, to kindly step towards the wall for a group photograph. May I also request the distinguished dignitaries who are in the first row to please join. We'll have a group photograph for everyone. So it's been a very rewarding session, lot much uh, thought-provoking uh, message. Uh, the way forward being extended, which we are going to be taking in our discussions and deliberations as we begin shortly our first uh, knowledge session. Uh, just after this group photograph, we invite you to please join us for tea and coffee being served outside. It's going to be a 15 minutes tea and coffee break. And if you can be uh, in time for the next session, 11.45, we intend to start our next session requesting you all, uh, in case you're still having your tea, probably you can uh, get your uh, teacups inside and be seated, be a part of the discussions. We start at 11.45. Any further presentations to be uploaded, you can do so during the break time. Thank you.